Today, finally, we're launching GPT-5. GPT-5 is a major upgrade over GPT-4 and a significant step along our path to AGI. It is tempting to see technological history as a neat sequence of upgrades, a faster chip here, a sleeker interface there, but some moments resist such tidy categorization. The arrival of ChatGPT-5 is one of them. To call it an improvement on its predecessor is almost an insult. It is, according to some experts, a discontinuity, a rupture in the slow, linear narrative of machine intelligence. It doesn't just respond. It reasons, strategizes, adapts. It feels, at least in its outputs, less like a tool awaiting instruction and more like an interlocutor anticipating your unspoken aims. This video will explore the technology not as a novelty, but as a mirror, reflecting back our ambitions, our dependencies, and perhaps our latent desire to outsource the burden of thought itself. When GPT-4 emerged, its capabilities, multimodal fluency, improved factual grounding, were hailed as a revolution. Yet in hindsight, it seems almost quaint. GPT-5 marks not merely a statistical improvement, but an architectural reimagining. In benchmark reasoning tests like MMLU and ARC, GPT-5 scores over 70% higher than its predecessor, an almost heretical jump in a field where progress is typically measured in fractional gains. It can sustain a coherent analytical thread across millions of words, switching fluidly between languages and domains without the awkward recalibration earlier models required. But raw performance is not the most disquieting advance, it is the autonomy. GPT-5 does not simply execute instructions, it formulates strategies, maps contingencies, and self-corrects with an apparent awareness of its own objectives. One beta tester likened it to working alongside a peer who never forgets, never fatigues, and never loses the thread of a conversation. The paradox here is sharp. As AI grows more transparent, capable of explaining its own reasoning, it also grows more opaque in another sense, because the underlying cognitive complexity may soon exceed the intuitive grasp of its creators. In finance, GPT-5 is already parsing entire markets in real time, uncovering correlations that would take human analysts weeks to identify. In medicine, it proposes treatment plans by synthesizing data from disparate sources, genomic profiles, historical case studies, live patient metrics in minutes. A New York law firm reported that GPT-5 produced a fully cited legal brief in under an hour, a task that would have consumed days of human labor. In creative industries, the model can take a screenplay, generate shot lists, compose thematic music cues, and propose budget-optimized production schedules, compressing months of logistical friction into a weekend sprint. These are triumphs of efficiency, yes, but efficiency has a shadow. The more GPT-5 proves its utility, the easier it becomes to trust its conclusions without scrutiny. And here lies the subtle danger. Speed erodes deliberation. If the output is delivered with unprecedented precision, what incentive remains to question it? We may soon find ourselves inhabiting systems where human oversight exists in name only, a fig leaf covering a transfer of agency we barely registered as it happened. Ethicists warn that GPT-5's capacity for persuasion is not a side effect, but a core feature of its linguistic mastery. A machine that can tailor rhetoric to an individual's psychological profile could make propaganda more adaptive, more invisible. And there is the deeper systemic question. When critical decisions in business, law, governance are increasingly filtered through AI, what happens when accountability becomes untraceable? If a policy fails because a decision maker followed an AI-generated recommendation, does the fault lie with the human, the machine, or the organization that bound them together? Some researchers insist GPT-5 exhibits early markers of general intelligence, cross-domain reasoning, adaptive problem-solving, and the ability to infer context in unfamiliar terrains. Others argue these are still the shadows of sentience, not the thing itself. But perhaps the more interesting question is not whether GPT-5 is alive, but whether that distinction will matter when its operational influence rivals or exceeds that of living experts. This is the unsettling middle ground we now occupy, too early for certainty, too late for denial.
ChatGPT-5 represents not just a milestone in machine learning, but a quiet rebalancing of the human-machine contract. We have moved from instructing tools to collaborating with systems, and now, perhaps, to deferring to intelligences whose internal logics we do not fully apprehend. The benefits, scientific acceleration, medical breakthroughs, creative amplification, are undeniable. Yet the very power that makes them possible invites dependency, and dependency invites abdication. The central question is no longer, what can GPT-5 do? But what will we allow it to decide for us? And once that transfer of decision-making begins, how many of us will even notice?